Good morning YouTube and the internet. Today we're looking at the Corolla and I know it's been a while. Disregard the washing. Hang up inside because it's been raining. This is what we're looking at today. Now, last time you saw me, I did the oil. Pretty easy job. Um, and I told you I'd ordered some wheels. Well, after I ordered the wheels, about a week later I checked my email that my eBay had canceled link to, and uh, there's a thing there saying that uh, they'd cancelled my order because I failed to tell them what car it was going, the wheels were going on. So I emailed them, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Just send me the wheels. I know the PCD, I know the offset, just send me the goddamn wheels. You know, if I get it wrong, it's entirely my fault. Anyway, um, it was their policy to cancel the order. Which was incredibly frustrating, so I decided to go elsewhere. And there was nowhere else. Hang on a second. Garage door's open. That shouldn't be open. No one in here. Don't recall leaving that open. Ow, I walked down here with no shoes on. Because I was worried someone was actually actively trying to steal something. Um, the reason it concerns me is the gates up the house are all secure, but people could get through there. So if they go into the neighbor's yard, they can get into my yard through there. Um, but it's a rental, so like I'm not putting a fence up. Usually, I just make sure everything's locked. Anyway, back to the story. So... I decided I'd go elsewhere to get the wheels and after weeks and weeks and weeks of looking I just couldn't find those wheels anywhere else so I conceded and I went back to them and I actually told them I said uh, don't email me asking what car is going on and making a fucking coffee table out of them because it doesn't matter if people buy the wrong wheels and if I've bought the wrong wheels and they don't fit for whatever reason that's on me. So, you know, they've, he's, they've said in their reasons that, you know, people keep wanting refunds because they bought the wrong sizes. Don't give them the refund. If you buy the wrong thing, it's on you. Anyhow, um, ignore the washing. I've got the best pair of scissors in the world here. And... Probably not going to be able to use that because there's addresses and shit here, and I'm going to cut that out. Uh, every one of these boxes <laughs> has got my address plastered all over it, so just open this. Sorry, you have to look at me, and not it. But, ow, we'll get there in a second. Uh, now you, you can't see my address. So, what did we go for for the Corolla? Can't see it, can you? Oh, starting to become clear. Voila. These are rats, obviously. I'm not buying Anki's for a $1,500 car. Bugger. Uh, so, but they're fake um, RPF ones. They're 15 by 8. And they look fucking mint. Um, 
and I reckon they're going to suit that car extremely well. So what I'm up to this morning is uh, figuring out what tyre I'm going to put on it, whether or not I go with just a general road tyre or put something a little bit more grip based on it, um, because I know what I'm like. And <laughs> I'm more than likely at some point when the 300 is running going to stick it on some sort of racetrack at some point it won't be fast but it might be entertaining um, but yeah I've got to get the rubber on it so then I can take some measurements on the height because after I fit those wheels and tyres I can get it registered and then that's that's it like just needs a robo certificate and tyres is all it needs put wheels and tyres on it while you're there Boom, she's ready to go. Then, lowering springs. Not going to lower it heaps. Not going to make it, you know, fully hectic. But, the aesthetics, when I did it on my um, A101 Corolla, uh, when I fitted 17s to that, it needed the lowering springs just to reset it so it didn't look like a monster truck. Otherwise, they look too tall if you've ever seen like a lancer on 16s or 17s that hasn't been lowered you'll know exactly what i'm talking about they look weird um, you end up with more arch gap than what you started with um or more and way more ground clearance it just it just looks off so i will be getting that um yeah so that's it for now i'm just gonna figure out what tires i'm gonna get on it and probably get that sorted out Monday, today's Saturday, and in the interim, I might go spend some time with the race car today, be a good idea, eh, because, uh, oh, and also watching World Time Attack live stream on YouTube, because it's on today, but yeah, they look awesome, they finally arrived. Let's get one out. Let's get it out. Have a proper look. They're not too heavy. Let's see. They are 15 by 7, sorry, which is, yeah, that's what I wanted. Uh, I'm trying to read the offset. It says 33. I thought that was supposed to be 35. But yeah, that's a very nice looking little wheel. Ugh, and it's starting to get heavy holding it in one hand, outreach like that. But we're good to go. I'll get them in the tire shop in the next few days and uh, get some rubber fitted. Get them on the car. Get it registered. So previously I filmed a very long winded and detailed uh, thing about how to do the fitment and I might add some of the clip of how I measured to make sure offsets and everything clear. Um, that was all based on a different set of wheels but uh, in case I don't put that in I do want to show you this. I've shown you this before. Uh, this is willtheyfit.com so you input your current uh, wheel and tyre so this factory is a 5 inch with a 39mm offset uh, actually, is that right? Yeah, 4 by 13 175 70s, which is what we've got. And, yep, by 13s. So, this is to figure out the tire size. So, the wheels are 15 by 7, 33 mil offset. And if we calculate this, you've got some data here. There we go. But more importantly, we've got a picture down here. So this shows me um, how the wheel is going to fit in comparison to the existing one. Uh, now, if we go up here, we can see the diameter is pretty close together. Uh, poke, 24 to 55. So we're going to increase poke by 30 millimeters. And in the other footage, it should tell me to you that we've got that room to play with. I think we've got 35. 
and we have insert which is how much further inboard the wheel sits so that matters for suspension and clearances but they should be fine in this case speedo error which is based on circumference and diameter 1.7 percent that's not a problem uh, and that's because I've had a bit of a play with the tire size and profiles to get that as close as I can so 20545 is the tire we're gonna want to run on this uh, which will be plenty beefy I want to go for a big square um, sort of looking tire we could even go the 215 potentially you see it sort of pokes out here a bit but th that will look all right because it actually won't be square like that it'll be sort of bulbous out the side uh, that would affect and give me even closer on the speeder so that's an even better match for tire um, diameter because profile is a percentage of the width so 4.5 is 45 percent of its aspect ratio so we're going, I'm going to look for 215.45.15 tires right now and hopefully uh, they're reasonably commonly available and that size the sorts of tires I want if not I can go to a 205.45 and that will still be acceptable so that should be fine um, I'm going to get my Google on. Alright, um, this is why you're preparing you do Google. 22545 is going to be the go. You can get 21545, but it is very uncommon and would be very expensive. 22545 15s are pretty common. Uh, a couple of obvious first choices would be an RS3 or an RS4. These would be old stock. They don't make them anymore. These are the current one. These are a extremely high performance street tire um, with a great value price point. These are cheap as shit, but they perform extremely well as well. And you would be looking at this one here, the 180 to 200 Treadwear Street tire, not the actual semi slick compound, which is 120 to 140. Uh, this does appear to come in the correct size right here now it does say seven and a half inch rim but this other chart that i've always used here does give 225 as the maximum tire width option on a seven inch rim so i'll make a call uh and ring a tire dude and say hey just double checking sevens uh with a 225 on it what do you reckon? Um, it seems to be not uncommon. Most people go with stretch these days. <laughs> but um, I like a nice fat sidewall. That's a mild school, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we're going to look at that and hopefully get those tyres fitted Monday, Tuesday. Depending on when they can get them. And depending on how much they cost and depending on where I can get it done. But it should be done, you yeah. know by midweek at the latest. Good morning YouTube and the internet. It's now Saturday, well, good afternoon YouTube and the internet. It's Saturday afternoon. Uh, all that stuff was filmed last weekend. This week I went with the Ventus RS4 Hancocks. Um, I bought them off Tyrulu, Tyrula, whatever the hell they're called, just off the internet, because uh, it was just the best option in the time frame I had. And the result, is that? They look fucking sick. Um, I was worried about not filling the guards enough. I think you'll find I filled them entirely and maybe overflowed a little. Um, even the rear looks good, which on the rear they usually set in quite a way. So um, yeah, I think I'm all right. I've got a couple of options to deal with the poke here, which I won't go into a lot of detail. But um, I'm pretty sure I can fit a camber bolt and try and dial one and a half, two degrees camber into that. Um, but what you can see very plainly 
is what I was talking about it looking like a monster truck. So these are not a lot bigger in diameter. Um, you would have seen on the willthefit.com thing the percentage uh, speedo error, which was less than 2% from memory. Uh, it's neither here nor there, like it, it's, as far as the error is concerned, but you can tell what it does looks wise to the car. If you look how high it is. That's why you need the lowering springs. Um, or, I mean, you could put coilovers in the front and adjustable crap in the back, but they're not a coilover setup. They're a separate coil and uh, shock setup in the back, so it's not a case of just chucking a coilover in. Although, I think you can buy them to do that. I've, I've never done one in that sort of setup, so do your Googles, do your own research, figure it out. Um, but yeah, that'll be this video done, and in the next one, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how I'm going to measure it up and choose what size of uh, lowering spring I'm going to use. Um, meaty. Looks meaty. Um, <laughs> I'm very chuffed with that. That's exactly the sort of look I was going for. And once it's lowered, it'll, it'll be much better. Now, uh, there's nothing at this point stopping me from getting registered, so I'll see if I can get a mobile roadie guy out uh, at the start of this week and get the rego sorted out ASAP. Um, he'll also obviously go over some other components that I may have missed. Um, you know, and he'll point out any bushes or anything that I haven't noticed. I would notice them if I was driving it. But I can't drive it till it's registered, so uh, yeah, it'll be um, it'll be on the road this week, I reckon. Uh, if not, then I'm going to have other stuff to do because he's filed the roadie on it, and that'll give me more jobs to do on it, which I want to do quickly and get it on the road, and then get back to the 32. But yeah, that's uh, that's me, man. I ain't going to have to pull that top wheel in a little bit somehow. It's a camper bolt. There's options out there. I'll let you know, obviously. That'll do for today. And, uh, yeah, next job will be, that you'll see, will be selecting the lowering springs.